Hey everyone, before the video starts, I have a disclaimer here to let you know that I'm using all the videos in this uh, playthrough except for hole number 7, which is a new one, which means on the older ones you will see the old spin value. So the way that you do is that you take the spin value, the side spin value to be correct and divide it by 2.33 to get the new and correct one. The reason I do this is to be able to provide you with high quality content before the nine hole cup start. Make sure if you have any questions, you can always email support at goldclashtommy.com. Now, let's go to the video. Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various type of wind here for the Cursed Swamp 9 Hole Cup. As already explained we are playing with older videos, most of them to be able to provide you the best quality content here when there is a bit more darkness on the course. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also visit goldclashtommy.com for more Gold Clash related content for free. You can also get the best guides on the market by going to patreon.com slash goldclashtommy, link directly in the description down below. Can we get this video to 200 thumbs up? That would be amazing and I would be very thankful for that. Follow the info box on the right hand side to find the elevation adjustment, club distance adjustment, also a ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Make sure that if you do have any questions, send an email to support at goldclashtommy.com. Thank you for watching and let's go to hole number one. For hole number one, we will be playing a par four that we have been playing a lot of times. And this is a par four that honestly is played more or less like a par three. Either you bounce over the bunker like I showed you there using two and a half to three and a half bar backspin and also as much side spin to the left possible or you go for a rough bump which we're gonna do here. Now the result is not gonna be super duper but you will see the trick. Using the rough bump, sure a great right here might be danger in terms of having the bunker there but it would be a very safe way to get the ball to the green area without risking anything when it comes to bouncing over the bunker, especially for those of you having very low level drivers that do have power but do not have that much backspin will have an issue when it comes to bouncing over the bunker. You choose whatever route you feel comfortable with and you play with the driver that gives you the most power combined with a power 3 ball if you do play the rough bump, otherwise it's going to be enough with a power 1 ball if looking to bounce over the, over the bunker. Maximum distance plus 20 no matter what way you're playing and that's going to be the case here on hole number one, which I do believe is a must. Eagle. For hole number two, we are looking to play with our wood club and we are looking to play on the left side of the bunker. Why don't we bounce over the bunker? It's because there is a couple of glitchy spots there by the green that could make you roll too far and roll into the back of the green there. That is not something that we do want to do. Here, I would strongly advise you to play with a side spin three ball if possible. Katana would be perfect. Kingmaker works as well, but Katana is more frequently used compared to the Kingmaker, which it has a decent cost in the store. Blue ring by the bunker is what I'm using here with the Viper and we're using the ball just outside the adjustment ring to the right in curl to push the ball in to the right and here you can see that the ball comes in in a very good speed but rolls a little bit too much to the left and this obviously is going to be a super easy putt. I would recommend to play maximum distance plus 20 even though we are not in maximum distance. This is in my opinion the toughest of the par 3s when it comes to the, the cursed swamp here in the tournament. For hole number three, we are looking to go over the water on the left. Use the driver with the most power and top spin. And in my case, this is the extra mile level five. Power three ball, I would say, is close to a must because that will help us and also prevent us from having to go max over power. Max top spin, and I'm also using side spin as well. So we make sure that we stay away from the rough. Maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. Once we're done, we push up to max. 
and that will leave us uh, coming to uh, 368 yards. Second shot, we're playing with the Viper or the Sniper. We're gonna be somewhat close to minimum distance of our club and that is what we're going to play. Have in mind that you might sometimes be closer to maximum distance depending on how far you go with your drive and sometimes you might go even further than that and you will have a long iron towards the pin. I'm using one bar of backspin, would recommend though to go with two bars of backspin instead in my opinion. Minimum distance and no elevation here with the wood club. If this would be a long iron instead, that would have been a maximum distance with, uh, with no elevation instead. So obviously you play based on your club distance. So perfect ball. The ball is on its way. And it bounces on the fairway. We love how the camera turns around. We're coming in hot though, almost breaking the pin in half. So we do need more backspin, but in the end though, this is a really clutch, a nice Alba to get and will definitely put you in a good spot in the tournament. When it comes to hole number four, this is an interesting hole. And if we do have a crosswind or a headwind, we are going to play with our wood club and we're using a power zero ball to find ourselves in minimum distance of our club. Adjustment should be without any type of spin here in my opinion. You can see that I'm using a little bit of top spin if you look at the ball. I would say go with no top spin whatsoever here in crosswind. When it comes to headwind, we can apply half a bar of top spin because I do believe that this ball comes in a little, a, a touch too hot here in my opinion and obviously a little bit too much to the right. And in the end though, minimum distance with a 10% over adjustment is what we're looking for with a wood club. What do we do if we do have a tailwind then? In tailwind, then we will have the problem going in between clubs with a wood club. Then I would recommend to go with a long iron instead and preferably a goliath because the goliath has the power which makes the difference between the wood club and the long iron not be that big because if you're playing with the backbone or the grizzly or the saturn you will see the gap being so big that you will have to overpower your your shot if you're gonna reach to the island so therefore goliath pack it to make sure you do have it for tailwind but otherwise in crosswind or in headwind will play exactly as here obviously adjust it correct which i didn't do in my video follow the minimum distance plus 10 and you're gonna be very close for an hole in one For hole number five, we're gonna play a par four where I do believe we need to get an eagle. Four and a half bar top spin, and then as much side spin to the left possible. Playing with a power zero side spin, one ball, a mall in, and that you can do in crosswind and also in tailwind. If we do have a headwind, I would recommend to play with at least a power one ball to make sure that we don't have to go with overpower. Now you see that we aim basically directly into the bunker. And that is obviously something we're gonna have to have in mind now when we take our shot. Maximum distance plus 10. We go with half a ball of curl outside the adjustment ring to the right. And the reason we go with curl is to prevent ourselves from going into the bunker because we want to play down the left hand side. The ball will roll a little bit and the key here is to get past the trees that, that you do have there on the right. Second shot is gonna be with a short iron to pin. And here, as I am very close to minimum distance, I will be going for a dunk. And the reason for that is that the green here is very, very bumpy. It's very hard to get any form of consistency playing a bounce shot towards the pin. So if you do feel that you want to play the dunk, you should do that. Obviously, I'm not gonna force you to do so, but the dunk is going to be risk-free as, as it is a big green and even if you hit the pin you will still stay on the green for a simple putt. Adjustment, I'm playing medium distance and no elevation here and it's time to take our shot. And also the thorn is a key club here for its backspin because if we do have the backspin and we miss the pin completely like we go right side or left side it's still going to bounce back if we do play with the hornet or any other type of short iron we will bounce into the rough and then obviously the dunk would be you know not the best idea but play with a thorn good chance for an eagle and i would say this is almost a must make
For hole number six, we can play with Amalin, even though it's a par five. Using the quarterback, even though it is in a lower level. And here I'm playing with the red ring by the rough line, or to be correct, half of the blue ring inside the rough line. Max top spin, and then as much side spin to the left possible. I want, to, want you to use maximum five bars of top spin with your drive if you do have a higher level quarterback or you're playing just with a different club. Left side of the ball, just outside the adjustment ring to the left, and we adjust from max plus 10. The plan is to get the ball down the fairway. You can see we're miles away from the top rough, and that's totally fine as we are not looking to get that much distance. But obviously, we could get more distance and have a different shot to pin if we want to. But now we're focusing on playing with free to play balls. We're focusing on playing with as low equipment possible. And then this is perfect. I would, however, though, recommend to play with a sniper here instead of the Viper, because that will give you a better ball guideline to work with. And that will become a better chance than for you to drop the shot. If you would be reaching a little bit further, I would recommend to go with a little bit of backspin. But in this situation where we don't really have the distance after the quarterback seven with our, uh, that was our drive, we will just bounce over directly. So once again, you know, we are planning to give ourselves an opponent, sure. Uh, sorry, not opponent, but a chance, sure. But we don't want to risk that by going uh, in a situation where we are pushing the drive too hard uh, or we just have to play with such a high level ball then in my opinion that's too unnecessary very close for an albatross i play the second shot maximum distance and no elevation good chance here on hold number six for hole number seven the final of the part three so now we're going to play a rough bomb you can see now it's bright and that is because I do believe that this is the best possible video to show you here before the tournament starts. Three bars of top spin, one bar of left spin, and we are having the ball guideline going towards the pin. We are in complete minimum distance and have in mind that with a tailwind here, the rough bump will be an issue. And we're going to most likely have to bounce on the platform on the bottom right or we're gonna have to use a power three ball and play with a goliath now in the end we're gonna focus on the rough bump minimum distance with a 10 percent over adjustment we love the camera angle and it gets uh, that little swirl there in the end to drop it for a lovely hole in one this if we can play the rough bump i believe is our absolute best chance by the par threes to make a hole in one though but if it is tailwind then it's going to be tricky then we'll see what we can do for hole number eight we're gonna play at the final of the par fours and here i'm going to play on the left hand side here i would recommend you to play with a driver that gives you at least 4.5 bars of top spin and that's why i'm playing with the extra mile i'm keeping myself with a mauling but it's not wrong to play with at least a power one ball here as well four and a half bar top spin and i'm using as much side spin to the right possible aiming for the ball guideline to be just shy just directly over the rough pointing down the fairway and the reason i'm using the left side here instead of going right side is because we're gonna have a better chance on the left hand side than we will be having on the right hand side adjustment maximum distance plus 10 we see the ball bounce on the fairway and now it will roll and you can see that we are far away from the bunker so no reason to be alarmed in any shape or form Second shot, we're going to be complete maximum distance here, or at least very close to it, uh, which is definitely something that I will be, what can I say, uh, that I like to be. However, though, I see that I do have maximum distance as listed. We're going to change that one to medium distance, which is going to be more correct in terms of our club distance. I'm aiming at the fringe because that is the most firm spot on, you know, the fairway slash fringe or green. 
and we are bouncing over a little hump that is on the green that you cannot see but there is there trust me on that using somewhere between three to five bars of backspin depending on how the ball guideline would look medium distance plus 10 we bounce on the fringe we roll that one right that pin for a nice and lovely eagle and that's always nice to do that with a marlin as well and once again we keep ourselves with a low level ball which we can win for free in free not win but get for free in free, free chest and other silver chests and stuff like that For hole number nine, we use the quarterback. We are using max top spin and as much side spin to the right possible. Blue ring by the rough, as you can see there. We are just medium distance plus 10, and then we're going to apply half a ball of curl to the right. I would strongly advise you though to use a power one ball here. The quasar would be absolutely perfect as it has side spin two as well, which will help us to get the ball bounced to the right and we definitely prevent us from going into the bunker and the reason i'm using a mauling here is to demonstrate that you do have the possibility to play once again on a par 5 of the curved cursed swamp with uh, a mauling ball which is a very low level ball and still have a decent chance second shot i would recommend you to play with the sniper and here also comes to the fact where a power one ball would be more helpful as now we are in complete maximum distance and we are playing with such a small margin from the rough on the left and also at the bottom so a power one ball here and also the side spin will make us go further up and also move more right and therefore we will stay away from the rough and we will not be getting into the rough if we just make a poorly shot because if we make a poorly shot now and maybe hit like a double great left we will see our ball going definitely into the rough on the left and that is never something we do want to do adjust maximum distance and i'm adding plus 10 here as well and that i do in tailwind or in headwind in crosswind i normally don't add i play zero so i do make a change elevation there but especially in tailwind and cross in headwind i would like you to add 10 percent over adjustment maximum distance numbers Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough before the tournament start for the Cursed Swamp uh, 9 Hole Cup. Make sure you comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions. You can also send whatever question you have to support at golfclashtommy.com. Make sure you get the guides at patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. Link directly in the description down below. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. Thank you once again for watching and good luck in your Golf Clash game.